Welcome to Game of Roses. This is Pace Case. This is Bachelor Clues. We've just concluded watching episode five of Gen Trans Historic Bachelor Season 21. A lot to get into in this episode. We, of course, uh, have to deal with Matt Rossi. <laughs> yeah. Right out of the gate. We had two one-on-ones. We had a, a wild animal husbandry group date, the likes of which we may have never seen before in the history of the show in terms of sheer volume of animal. <laughs> we will get to all of What them. about the pig, the hot dog pig eating date? I think there were more sheep here than we saw pigs on that date that you're talking about, which was in no, season right. 20, maybe? Was that Ben Higgins? It was, right? Yes. I, I yeah. love the sheep date. When I saw this promo and that bouncing yeah. sheep, I w- couldn't wait. I know. They always do it in Traders. It's always funny to me. Did not disappoint. We will get to all of that. But first, we must tell no. you a bit of business. It is Monday, and uh, our show is on Monday, and we also have a watch party monday nights 33 taps in silver lake please if you're in los angeles on a monday night in season come join us out there i show up to every one of them and uh, so far it's been a, a great time during gen tran season we also have new shirts to celebrate gen tran you can get them at gameofroses.co and if you use the code gor2024 2024 you get 10 percent off everything in our store including our shot glasses which we also have right now the love levels shot glasses shot o'clock all right pace case you ready to jump into this let's go this is game of roses all right so we begin it is nighttime in auckland and we see immediately we're just into the show there's no promo for this there's no teaser we just see the guys walking into the cocktail party in the the darkness the shadows and Jonathan is ITMing that everybody's excited. It's a great vibe. These guys have no idea that Matt Rossi is waiting just outside in his best bow tie tuxedo to potentially destroy their entire night. Or so we're led to believe. Wait, what? You think they knew? No, no, no. I think they didn't know. I'm saying, or so we're led to believe that he's there to destroy their night. They built this Matt Rossi thing up. Obviously, it was a cliffhanger last week. I mm-hmm. felt that the payoff did not warrant the buildup. They had this guy fly out there to be on TV for a grand total of about a minute. Yeah. Um, at any I rate, mean, it's uh, as soon as we saw the vlogs, I knew what was coming. Um, mm-hmm. I want, you know, it's when a skeleton is just going to be a one-off. It's like uh, get him in the game. At least one round. At least sequester him in a hotel room and force him to spin a pizza box on his head. At least least give me that. At least do a sequester. Yeah. And he's got to vlog it. He did get to have one conversation with Dark Lord Palmer, I suppose. But uh, Dylan here plays a second audience shout out to uh, all the other guys as they're sitting around waiting for the cocktail party to start saying they're basically the brothers he never had. I thought that was a nice little play. Jen then is pondering Mm -hmm. into a fire as she ITMs a friendly reminder that Matt Rossi is there and he definitely 100% flew in from Boston of his own accord with his own money. It was definitely his idea. He definitely did this. Mm -hmm. The producers had nothing to do with this. Uh, Certainly, they didn't even know. He just showed up and walked straight onto set right in front of the cameras. They had no Mm -hmm. foreknowledge. So we get that little piece. DLP comes to greet her and discuss Uh, what she's decided about Matt Rossi, and she claims she didn't know he had feelings for her. They discussed the love level four that he dropped on her the day prior, and she admits now, oh, she's even more confused what to do. I think Jen Tran is acting a lot in this season on on multiple levels. This was the hardest they've asked her to act yet, in my opinion. And it was a little, (laughs) I don't know if I was buying it. (laughs) Oh, really? I mean... The love level four thing, uh, it was, uh, to say it's the first love level four ever, it it almost gave, you took things from me a little mm-hmm. bit. Like you didn't allow me to have a love level four that was like real or whatever. Jen joins and says, you know, my past has started to impact me in a lot more ways than I imagined. It's ADR to shit. But yeah. The... I know I've become more sensitive to the Frankenbiting, but this 
I, I think everyone notices it. It's so it's so blatant it's, at this point. Even if you can't hear it, even if you can't hear or distinguish that they're using two different audio takes, that this is a piece of an ITM they took from over here and a piece of some conversation she had with somebody else in a prior episode from over here, even if you can't hear the difference, if you ever see someone saying something and you don't see them saying it, they did not say it. That That's yeah. as easy as it can get. If they have footage of the person saying the thing, they're going to show you that footage simply so that you don't question it. If you don't see them saying it, they never said it. Or they didn't say it in that context. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, unless it's like, I can imagine sometimes if it's shot by an ocean or something, or it's like, hell, we've seen House that. House of the Dragon all the time. I'm like, okay, it's a huge set piece. So if you didn't get it on the day, yeah. okay. But yeah, it, it just, it takes me out of it. Um, she says that. She tells the guys that uh, someone from her past is here and everyone does these great face plays. He wants to join this journey. And she says she is going to talk to him tonight. And so and even that, like they force her to do that. They force these other guys to have to sit there and listen to her. She already knows at this point what she's going to do. She, she knows yeah. as soon as he walks in, but she has to come in. This is 100% acting. She's sitting with these yeah, guys. Yeah, she's playing with all the to, producers at this I have point. to talk to him now. Oh, my God. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, this is scripted. <laughs> and it, in my opinion, is like falling flat. And so far this season, they've done a pretty good job, I think, of keeping the, the producer machinations hidden. They're sloppy here and there. Old Aaron Herb's fake book comes to mind as being a sloppy moment of that. But this is just, it's, it's a step too mm -hmm. far, frankly, in terms of producing a believable season. Because once you have asked your bachelorette to do wholesale acting in a scripted scene, and it is this, which we're all watching, and you've also asked your players to do it, I, I assume most of those players know, like, she's not going to fucking keep him. This is just some dumb thing. Anybody who's watched the show before knows that this type of shit happens, and they will invariably kick this person off. Very rarely will that person stay. And usually only if they're a prior player. Except Nick Vial. <laughs> but he was a player in a prior season. This Matt Rossi guy is just, like, some dude off TikTok. Um, I, I think they're asking too much of all of these players to, to make this believable enough to make the season coherent. End of us. It's gonna. It sticks out like a sore thumb to me. Like this, so far, this is what I'm gonna remember the season for. And it's like that ain't good. You know, I'm sure that'll get blown out of the water later by whatever crazy plays. But I think I'm gonna remember it for the Sam uh, Devin rivalry so far. We didn't get as much of that this it was, episode. It was which gone. I, yeah. Which makes me. Wonder. There was such a tonnage in the last episode. Yes, but is it as real as they're making it seem? Because most of their banter back and forth is also Frankenbitten. Right. And we're getting all these things from uh, Sam You're McKinney's parents. You're saying they didn't parents. get any rivalry play from them. No. And don't this you think week. that that would have happened at least once? I don't know. I don't know. They were on a group date together. Um, and it was like they were buddies. <laughs> we'll get to it, I guess. At any rate. Sam M's. We get a little bit of Sam M. That, I was lacking Sam M in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> He does feel his blood boiling. Boiling uh, inside of him. They're all reacting to this. <laughs> uh, the floater, Austin says it's whack several times. This is yeah. his, uh, his little catchphrase. And we have several people throw around an ultimatum, like, I'm gone if she's, if she's here. We see Matt and Jen have this conversation. And he says you're such an important person in my life and like now we're adults so i want to try like dating now that we're older to kind of justify why there's been this three-year gap between when they're dating and when he's at love level fouring and she basically says you're really important but um you know i i have no oh, they leave it as a cliffhanger basically um like, she might pick him, she yeah, might she needs not, to know what to decide. But... I thought his performance here was weak, personally. If you're going to come in and try to crash a season, it is, you are my soulmate, and I have realized that the the idea that I might lose you is soul-crushing, and I had yeah. to come here to get you back. There is no other path for my life. He's like, eh, we're adults now, and I figured we should just date a little and yeah, see Yeah, I'm like, you're up. skipping two of your friend's weddings for yeah. this declaration. It, it should be... 
it was a week laying it on the line crash and with no juice to back it up like if you're the second place finisher from the prior season trying to get into a season nick vial i think that's fine if you're even blake moines a kind of superstar standout from the prior season that's going to work for you because the producers want you in the show the lead might want you in the show, and especially in Vial's case, if you've literally been talking to the lead in DMs, they might want you in the show. This is like, dude, we're done a long time ago. I think she can see through the fact that he's just there to get screen time. And she's like, mm -hmm. not on my watch, bro. <laughs> yeah, she's just, you're trying to get your wiener dog views up, I could tell. Yeah. And they have this kind um, of like a, a weak montage here of these these guys, including Devin, being like, if that guy sticks around, I'm leaving, dude. Trying to build mm -hmm. this fake drama around this moment that, again, lasts for about 10 minutes here in the beginning of this episode that I thought was, you just didn't need it. Like, in looking back at, you have all your footage, you've shot this season, I personally would have cut this guy completely out. This never would have mm. been in the show because it added nothing. It allowed you to do a cliffhanger last week, which is like false. We all know that. And then it comes into this week for one segment in the very beginning for about 10 minutes. And then it's just nothing. We'll never hear about this guy again. He had no impact on the season whatsoever. Yeah, we're getting this like loose, loose talk about Devin saying he's been cheated on. So it's bringing his past back. But it's all it all doesn't matter because he then joins the guys and he says i did come here completely on my own he's like he keeps reiterating yeah. i have not been kidnapped and um don't want to take anything away from your experience wish you all the best uh wish her the best he apologizes and, to him he says i would just wanted to apologize to you guys for disrupting and no 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 i thought that his deference mm -hmm. to the process it's a good to second the game, audience game yeah not too bad but I agree. I half expect him to whip out his phone and be like, look, here's my credit card bill. You can clearly see these purchases were made on my credit card and no producers were involved. It's just a video of Aaron Berge writing the check for the <laughs> ring in season two. <laughs> I wish. Oh, my God. Um, and Sam M does some great, great post, yeah. <laughs> post uh, elimination threats uh, saying, you know, we got good dudes here. Glad you're going to stay in the past. Like, he talks in movie lines, which I love. <laughs> yeah, he's trying to get in his screen time there. But even that was like, and? I, again, I just would have cut this whole thing out of your season. I think it does a disservice, ultimately, to the believability of the season. And if what you're looking... I don't know how the season ends, but if what mm. you're looking for at the end of the season is like, we sent Jen on a, a believable journey to find her soulmate. No, you didn't. Remember when you guys brought that guy no, in to didn't. try and derail the whole season and it, it lasted for like five minutes? It just, to me so far, in terms of like the producer's abilities this season, this was the low point. I, and I don't assume there will be anything this bad again, hopefully. We'll see. Time um, will tell. We indeed. get to our first uh, first rose ceremony <laughs> of the episode we get two yeah and first flower goes to grant second jeremy third jonathan spencer austin floater beat out thomas n another person from my final four gone yeah i know i was very surprised <laughs> He's hanging thomas on dylan and marcus at this point <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know who the final four is going to be it's it's starting to take a different shape to me but we say goodbye to thomas n and john mitchell your service will be remembered. Thomas N. specifically, I'm looking very forward to your duties on Paradise. I think they are going oh, yeah. to have a, a wild time getting you in fights with every guy who comes on the beach. We get Austin here, gets the cheers to uh, being better than the guys in her past. <laughs> so he even gets in a little fuck you to Matt get Rossi at the end there. Get in there, Austin. <laughs> And they didn't give Stay Thomas in the past. <laughs> they didn't give Thomas they in. They should have just started uh, making wolf noises at this point. I would have been down for that. Um, mm -hmm. They did not give Thomas in or John Mitchell any exit speeches at all. Not a word. They are mm. just like out the door. So instead of of Thomas in, who was like a key player up to this point in the season, getting even a word of goodbye, we got ten minutes of Matt Rossi wearing his bow tie and apologizing to the guys. It just was a bad And I move, feel I bad. 
it's why I never want a rose ceremony in the beginning because I'm like, okay, what did these players do? Okay, Grant got first flower. Yeah. What was that for? And I feel bad for these guys who went home in the first rose ceremony because you're buried in this episode. Absolutely. Um, you're like, oh, yeah, they went home too. Yeah. Um, we get uh, Jen's closing the door. She's ready to dig deeper for this crucial week with all these relationships. And all the guys want this want this first one-on-one, but it goes to Jonathan. He's over the moon right now. And Jonathan is a great four TRR player. He is mm. like, I'm over the moon right now. He's also a member of Dangle Nation, it mm. looks like. His earrings aren't quite dangling, but yeah. they're there. He's got them pierced. Then and he plays a little IFI when they go to a helicopter. He hates helicopters. I also have a... I don't want to go in a helicopter. It seems like they always crash. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what the crash rate is, but I've never been in one. I would do that. I would not skydive. I would not bungee really? jump, probably, but I would do a helicopter. But I it trust took a Kobe. What's that? It took Kobe. Yeah. The chopper. I know. You could get anyone. Look, life is a dangerous game. I'm much less beloved. <laughs> you have to play. Um, Love is, life is a dangerous game. So players, you're right. She explains her flight in a helicopter, and he says he hates him, like you're saying. And Jonathan's like, she's jumped out of a plane and off a building, so I guess she's going to be able to help me do all this. And we know that Jen is also afraid of heights from last week when they forced her to march around the... Um, the, ta- the sky woman. tower. I know. And now they're like, now you're going to get a helicopter. It, it's like, She's I guess like, that's the just what they're word? doing. Um, um, I thought he should have puked during this missed opportunity. Oh, if he could puke on command, that is an actually a very underrated skill set in our beloved game. Vomiting on command. I do think it can be is valuable. like, I mean, Vanessa Grimaldi, Nick Vial, like I do think it brings you closer because there's yeah. something about puking that is like, it seems for TRR, like you're not faking it, even though you could be, but, um, and then they get to comfort you and you got that, uh, Lawrence Nightingale. You fake puking. You're just in a corner going, hur, hur. what are you doing? I'm vomiting. Um, Can't you, you watch tell? Perfect match this past season or not perfect match. Yeah. Perfect match. Jazzy. Puked. Jazzy was trying to p- fake puke for a while. You're right. Oh, you remember that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to throw up. I'm going to throw up. I'm sick yeah. of what I've done. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Jowzy can fake puke. I, I didn't even put two or two together there. How stupid of me. Yeah. They fly in this helicopter to a vineyard. They land, get a little kiss. They're doing cartwheels together. They're playing hide and seek in this vineyard. Just being their goofy selves. The hide and seek didn't work for me. I was like, what is going on? The producers made them do that. They're like, run around these vineyards. Pretend to play hide and seek. There's like 10 people on two camera crews. There's no hide and seek. You just look up and be like, oh, all the cameras are over there. the camera crew is. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. That's all I'm picturing. I'm like, what? (laughs) And it's also just like the whole, I mean, I guess the the narrative they're trying to build up here is that they have a fun, goofy time together, but they need to get deeper. That's what they keep saying. He lets her be herself. Which and so is this is a uh, silly little child. Yeah, <laughs> they they throw grapes in each other's mouths. They're pretending to propose or do give roses, but they're grapes. And he's itming curiosity about being able to be to get past that friend zone. They then get into the portable hot tub, a time honored tradition. And he tells her that his biggest fear is breaking past the fun and friendly phase. He's been bad at connecting on a deeper level. We get a kiss here in Gen ITMs that for him to get a rose, she needs to feel like they can break past the fun barrier. Because roses mean more now than they ever have. Roses are no longer fun. They're serious now. That's the phase of but, the game. Uh, <laughs> she, uh, she knows that he has la- or he knows that she has layers to peel back. This is onion play. This is very uh, Love Island USA. Robin Leah. Mm-hmm. Um, we get to the night portion and. They toast to an incredible day, getting to know each other, and um, we get this ADR'd voiceover um, about, uh, you know, his, him talking about wanting to, wanting to open up about the real self, and he plays these walls, um, 
you know, because it's it's hard for him to trust and that he'll go in really hard and then it becomes a problem. I thought this was uh, he he talks about they lived for two years together and then and was was looking at rings with his partner and then um, she was abusing alcohol and I guess became emotionally abusive and uh, plays this PTC. And, you know, I, I, every guy seems to have a PTC mirroring Jen's, uh, Jen's emotional yeah. PTC this season, but mirror PTCs are always working for me. And, um, she says, I relate more than, you know, I had a toxic ex who gaslit and was manipulative. And do you, can I ask you, do you remember, did Maria have a similar PTC? I don't remember what hers was, Maria George's. But it seems like all of these no, guys. No, hers was a car crash. Oh, right. Yeah, okay, so she didn't. Hers was like a life-changing kind of tragic We've had a bunch of guys who've been in car crashes. We've had that this season? Marcus, no, the guy who got blown Maria's up by a grenade. Lead. That's similar. But it is oh weird God. that like all of these guys have PTCs that line up with Jen, yet they were cast for Maria. So I was just wondering, you know, it was like... Did Maria have a similar PTT, PTC? But you're right, she didn't. Hers is a, a traumatic auto accident. I don't know if she had a relationship one. I can't remember. The only one I but remember is the car crash. I think everyone has probably multiple PTCs that you can yeah, adjust for whoever the lead is. Um, and this one works great. And I honestly, like, Jonathan's 4TRR play style is working for me. I'm hoping, <laughs> at this point, I'm hoping she ends up with Jonathan or Dylan or... I'm yeah. just scared of what's going to happen this season. He, he's just a little boring for me, despite the fact that he's he's the guy who is the goofiest and the most friend-like. It's like, I, this one-on-one mm. -on -one to me was just, it was very by the numbers, very simply played. Nothing stood out to me. But he does get this mm. PTC off, and then we see back at the hotel, all the other guys are talking about um, Jonathan being a great guy, but they still wish they were on the one-on-one -on -one date. Date card arrives. Group date, love is messy. Devin, Sam, Marcus, Spencer, Jeremy, Dylan, and Austin, which means Grant is going to get that other one-on-one -on -one this week. And Austin ITMs that he's jealous because the other guys are all a few steps ahead of him. He hasn't even had a one-on-one -on -one date now. We all know where this is going. Once they start laying in these, these ITMs that are like, I don't know, I just feel like I'm losing the game. Then you are. Then you are. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't want to... You don't want to call attention to it either. We cut back to the date, and they basically play PTCs about their parental strife. Um, watching... Oh, Jonathan saw his mom go through a lot, and all he wanted to do was make his family smile. And Jen plays this similar PTC about, about um, parental strife growing up. Um, yeah, I would say it was, you know, a pretty standard one-on-one, -on -one, but for me, it was at least more entertaining than the Spencer one-on-one, -on -one, which was... Oh, for sure. Yeah. Tough to get <laughs> That's through. the bottom. That is the, the low bar. That's the yes. thing that is like, if you get down there, you're in trouble. That's bottom of the barrel for the season. I agree. But I would put this one maybe like a notch above that, but only one notch. But I agree. The, the running around in the vineyards, the IFI about heights... These at least put some flavor into an otherwise yes. boring one-on-one, uh, -on -one, I think. But nonetheless, he played it, again, textbook clean. So he gets that one-on-one -on -one rose and a kiss. And then the producers dump a giant bucket of water on them as they're making out to simulate rom-com rain. And they've, they've talked about, or he's talked about at least, wanting that rom-com type of love a few times over the course of this episode. So I guess that's the theme they were going for. And... To, you have no, to no. Like, I feel like we're in bananas territory with this raid. I I'm like, too. it was absurd. Are we leaning into like just crazy stuff is always going to happen? I mean, here's how it, these things go down. This is a step beyond down. fireworks. These things go down in a group chat between all the producers. They're like, okay, Jonathan's going to get the one on one. What is that date going to be? This is the helicopter date. How are we going to end it? Like, he what thematic element can we weave through it? And then they tell him in those ITMs, 
talk about rom-coms how much you like rom-coms because he's probably put that in his application at some point there's like a fun fact mm. sheet that you have to fill out at a certain point where you say your favorite movies and you you know your fears and all this kind of shit he, i'm sure he put in there that he loves rom-coms so he goes on that date and they're like how can we make it like a rom-com dump a giant tank of water on their heads while they're making out even they as it's happening are not like pretending that it's actually raining. They're kind of laughing like, this is crazy. And it doesn't look like it's raining because it's only getting water in like a five foot by five foot square area immediately yeah, around you them. you would immediately walk out of yeah, exactly. space. <laughs> yeah. Stay in. Why we just need 10 more seconds. There? Stay there. I mean, they, it just, I don't know. I'm like, are we either fully leaning into this that just crazy stuff is always going to happen on these dates and like, yeah. That's part of the the bachelor, the Love Island gods, the bachelor gods or whatever. Um but it wasn't even I don't crazy. Know. It was it was like poorly done. That's what I'm saying. It's only occurring in a little 5 foot patch. They're out on a on a big <laughs> patio of this whatever this restaurant or this building wherever they are. How much more would it have cost to just make it rain in that entire patio? Probably not much more. Mm. I'm literally picturing there's just like 10 gallon trash bags full of water and some poor PA is like punching them with forks to just get the, the water to come out and somebody's like holding them above their heads. I, it just looked like chintzy to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like Jen didn't seem surprised. I'm like, okay, Jen knows this is coming. This yeah. is kind of a weird thing. If Jen knows it's coming. Like, they both know it's coming water on your head he they, knows of course they're standing under a giant tank of water they're like stand right there well what's this tank of water no, above I my head she brought him over there <laughs> but they can see it they're standing under she a giant she structure said, don't look up <laughs> <laughs> don't look up and don't look over there at that weird thing holding that giant water don't look tank. up don't look over there don't look anywhere yeah. just look in my eyes <laughs> <laughs> they, they 100% knew what was going to happen, and they have to pretend like they don't to maintain this illusion of, in quotes, a rom-com. The rom-com love, which DLP does even in the casting card after this. Are yeah. you looking for a rom-com oh, love? Brutal. Now, um, that said, what we get next is a work of fucking art. Uh, this is day, awkward. We see some birds chirping away in a tree branch. I'm like, hey, maybe that's my creature. Nope. We yeah, see two other turkeys. giant birds pecking the ground. Are these my creatures? Hell no. Because we see Jen in blue jeans. As the guys are all kind of wearing blue jeans, they all have on plaid shirts. Some of them have the sleeves cut off. Austin is one of those guys. Dylan's ITMing that he doesn't want to get his shoes muddy. We know what that means. This is going to be a very dirty, muddy kind of farm-style date. And she says she wants to introduce the guys to some new friends, and we hear a thunder in the distance. We hear some sheep bleeding, and then we see a giant herd of sheep like an ocean wave rolling over this hill unbelievable and a sheep dog it's creature overload the creatures this season have been insane and they just don't stop i've I, this I blew my mind loved it. i couldn't wait after we saw the hopping sheep in the promo and it delivered this is always funny to yeah. me i think this date should be on every season and um, we get two other friends, Diana and Richard, and they are the bystanders who are leading this date, but also giving a little ceremony of the ancients yeah. here about their uh, relationship longevity. And they announce that <laughs> Richard goes, one, one of you blokes is going to get the pie for time. <laughs> But in New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, looking for a most Excellent. viable farmer. I was like, wait, what? It's the ultimate sheep farmer now? Is they're looking for? I'm like, all right, I'm on board, fuck it. And yeah, uh, Richard, farmer. by the way, was my... Jorge, 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 Jorge Moreno, bystander of the week. You had two to choose from here. I, I picked him. Yeah. He was also my Jorge, 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 Jorge Moreno, bystander of the week. I loved the delivery of one of you, one of you blokes is getting this play yeah. for time. And then he's <laughs> harassing people throughout and making fun of them. He's like, why aren't they going for the gate? I told them to open the gate. <laughs> oh, the, the gate thing. He's was, just like was a wild. little 
devil. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Sam M here, ITMs that he's been around farm animals his entire life, so he thinks he's going to have some advantage. He doesn't. Uh, the guy doesn't <laughs> jog off. They start uh, trying to herd these sheep into this this pen that he's that Richard has told them about, and the sheep are going wild, ignoring the guy's herding techniques. We get a nice shot of the sea of unruly sheep, and one sheep that we saw in the promo takes the initiative to first jump above the others and look directly into the camera lens to get that solo screen time. And this solo jumper was my. Creature of the week. This solo jumping sheep <laughs> that got enough of a punch to get in the promo for next week and also reappeared in this episode. <laughs> and he, I believe he's the, the sheep representative of Richard's intentions, hopping around, staring into camera. This sheep was also my creature of the week. week, 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 week. <laughs> I think this is going to be my creature of the season. I'll say it right now. It's going to be hard. You know, I, I thought later. I loved this hopping yeah. sheep. Later, we got another creature that was reminiscent of the donkey in Matt James's season where Devin and uh, Jen are what? making out and there's a sheep there pooping? next to them. Huh? Was it pooping? It wasn't pooping, but they did that, that exact same setup for Matt James. Oh, gotcha. I forget who was on that date with him. Was that Serena? Kirkano? I forget who was on that date with him, but they yeah, had a similar maybe. setup where they were making out and there was a donkey in the foreground. Then that donkey started pooping to become possibly the creature of the franchise history. I don't know, but yeah, we see, um, Never forget that. this date doesn't end with just herding these sheep. They all have a bunch of other activities to do. They have to shovel sheep shit. They have to drink sheep milk is that even a thing is this goat milk i don't know it reminded this me very much of the... all of the disgusting yeah. fear factor dates into one corinne refusing to shovel shit mm -hmm. we're getting we're getting sean low desiree hartsock drinking that milk um i loved this I and did too. uh <laughs> the richard comes back when they all fail this this activity and he says not a lot of collective intelligence here and Jen <laughs> makes this wide-eyed, eyebrow-raised smile, which was my face play of the game. Her reaction to this lack of collective intelligence was hilarious. Yeah. Eyebrows to ceiling, uncomfy smile, gort. We see after this, Devin gets some impromptu one-on-one -on -one time after Jen ITMs once again that she's looking for the guys to make the small moments. They just have that ITM on replay whenever they need it whenever any guy mm -hmm. is going to talk to her they'll hit that itm right before that and devin does get this one-on-one -on -one time and the guys are watching him and kind of led by sam m he's itming this is a sign of disrespect lions don't concern themselves with the opinions of sheep it's like they're still trying to hit that rivalry He's lying. but it's I not <laughs> it falls flat because you're not we already saw these two guys sitting in a room by themselves in a forced guy chat hating each other's guts this seems like Sam is kind of laughing about it. It seems like whatever actual animosity is between them is gone mm. this episode. I don't know if it's going to come back next week or not, but I, they just have done a, a bad job of keeping that rivalry brewing, in my opinion. Mm. They had it going. I like the lines like, don't yeah. concern themselves lines. Yeah. Um, um, we see Richard. Oh, and then they have to do a horrible thing, which I think they should have cut out. The dingleberries. The dingleberries. The dingleberries were hard this to watch. This was my wowie <laughs> moment of the week. <laughs> what? WTF? Ew, why? Yeah. Why? I agree. I it stepped didn't too far. Much. Yes, I agree. They're already shoveling shovels full of shit. Isn't that enough? Isn't that enough? I think you get one, one shit play per episode. That's all you get. Yeah. You can't do two. Uh, Diane explains that Devin wins the play for time he walks off with the other guys are pissed best farmer <laughs> yeah he's the best sheep farmer in new zealand who's also on the bachelorette austin itms that he won the best talker award but he doesn't know about the best farmer and then we see devin and jen kissing next to the sheep which again very reminiscent to me of that matt james moment portion six begins. austin you're not focusing on shoveling shit you're focusing on small moments devin exactly. is the best 
farmer of the group yes. date because he steals her. He, he gets he caught up too much. And a lot of players will get caught up in this. The yeah. rules of whatever the, the mini activity. game is on a date. And you just can't. They're, they're, the only rules you should be following are I need to get that first audience to like me or at least present myself in a way that the producers can cut together a package that supports that idea. The mm -hmm. Winning these little games. I mean, Jesus, we saw Kelly Flanagan cheat to win one of these kind of obstacle course things in season 24. And Tammy Lee was like... And win the play for time. Yeah, she pissed some people off in the second audience, but she got that time. She won, in quotes. The rules of these mini games don't matter. You're playing the bigger game. And I thought Devin did a good job of that here. Portion six begins. We... We're at the after party. Uh, Jeremy asked Devin if he thinks he deserved the farmer of the day. <laughs> that was funny. He's like, well, I think it was more about <laughs> the, the initiative of doing what I've always been doing. And Jeremy sarcastically goes, that's pretty insightful. And he smiles at Devin, then abruptly drains all of the emotion from his face to deliver a mask of hatred for Devin that was my face play of the game. Did you notice this? Oh, I missed this. Yeah. No. He's like, a mask yeah. of hatred. <laughs> He's like, that's pretty insightful. He just immediately <laughs> snaps his face to look like super mad at him. I was like, damn, that's that's some skill. Oh, I'm the best farmer. Yeah. I cut all those dingleberries for nothing. <laughs> I wonder if any of them saved any of the dingleberries as a memento. Ew, Chad, too far. I took it too far. We literally, they, yeah. they did this. You did. I'm just watching a TV show. That's all I'm You're doing. You're disgusting. I'm discussing it. <laughs> <laughs> I like you're mad at me for making a joke about their <laughs> grotesquerie. <laughs> uh, we get Austin doing this date and rose math. I'm one of two guys that hasn't gotten a one-on-one. -on -one, oh. And I'm the only guy in the house that hasn't received either a one-on-one -on -one or a group date rose for validation. No so zero pointers. Which, by the way. At, you're at the bottom. Uh, just FYI, at the end of this episode, I'm going to be giving out a running kind of countdown or running a list of everybody's rose quotients who's still in the game because tonight we saw our fifth rose ceremony which means the players still in the game have all accrued five roses which means they qualify for an official rose quotient number starting now and i'm going to try to keep track of this throughout the season uh, the rose quotient for those who don't know is a metric that we have devised here at game of roses to essentially tell you how good certain players are at getting these high value roses, group date roses, one-on-one -on -one roses, first impression roses, basically any rose outside of a rose ceremony. And uh, I'll tell you how we break down mm. that score at the end of this episode when we also run down who has the best rose quotient, which was interesting That's pretty to insightful, Clues. Thank you. Uh, whoa, <laughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. All right, Jeremy has some one-on-one -on -one time. He talks about how he was an AD pie a frat. Obviously, she makes fun of him for stroking her hair. <laughs> He's explaining He that. keeps petting her. I love yeah, it. He wasn't a frat I guy. He has a dog. <laughs> I thought it was, it was a little too bizarre for my taste, but he plays this PTC of um, being an overweight kid. And he's, he's low-key of being lonely, he says, and Jen says she's afraid of giving too much to the wrong person. She's done that in the past. That's her PTC. We get a little kiss. And then she laughs at him as he continues to pet her head. I said, maybe this is my error of the game, but obviously it was not. Something way bigger happened. Obviously not. Yeah. Um, We get the guys discussing the group date rows. They talk about how Marcus says it's a different ball game now. Open and um, we get Austin performing a steal from Dylan. And we've been checking in with Austin, who is sad about turtling, sad about his date numbers. And he delivers this speech. I've been playing catch up this whole time. You have an amazing guys. I want you to get what you deserve. And she's like, what are you saying that you? And he's like, I don't think I can continue. And this self-elimination by Austin was my error, 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 error of the game. It, I, I, I understand what he was trying to do is trying to be a four TRR self-elimination of like, you have such amazing guys. Like I know your connection is here, 
and I and I'm sure they played up Jen's reaction to this, mm-hmm. but there was a way to do this that I mean that you never self eliminate first of all, and you. Uh, you got to give a big splash before you yeah, do it you or have to at get least value. have a good speech and like maybe tear play. Like I know, like, I don't know. I just, this was disappointing. You made it this far. Yeah. I agree with you a hundred percent. That is why Austin's self-elimination was also my. Error, 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 error of the game. If you're going to go out, if you're going to do this, you have to get value because it is one of the only things you can do that, at, especially at this point in the game, that will guarantee you some amount of screen time. Your whole speech mm-hmm. here that you give to her is basically going to be in the show. They may give you yeah. an exit speech to some degree about why you're leaving. You need to be doing tears at the very least. And at the very most, you can be hurling grenades. You could tell her, look, I, mm. I know that you know Sam and Devin um, are having some kind of rivalry going on, but it's deeper than that. They actually love each other. Something along those lines. <laughs> Put in <laughs> a fake narrative that they're in a romantic relationship behind Stir the, the scenes. Pot. Yeah, something. Something to make this better than just like, well, I didn't get a one-on-one. I need to leave. Who cares? It, it, it takes all the value yeah. that he had. Like, there, There's an idea in this. That is, I didn't get the time I deserved. I didn't get a fair shake. And you can ride that yeah. idea into paradise. He doesn't even really play that. It's just more of a like, look, I think I'm playing catch up. I think I'm beat basically in the game. And so I'm going to yes. take my loss and go home. It was like, I see the cards I'm giving up. Yeah. You never um, take the L. She doesn't seem to be upset at first. No. Uh, I respect that. She's not ever upset about this. Yeah, she's like, I I respect it. And no, no, no. In her head, she's like, oh, this dude's doing my dirty work for me. I thought I was going to have to cut this guy. And he's he's not giving me any good reason to, so I might look like the bad guy when I dump him. Oh, you're leaving the show of your own accord? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Oh, Leeds okay. love this. Leeds absolutely love self-eliminations because it, it removes a dump that they're going to have to do. I, I think that the amount of self-eliminations, though, can grate on a lead and make them feel like Jen says here, it seems I wasn't enough for Austin. Maybe I'm doing a bad job as Bachelorette. And this That's is a sentiment you get in a lot of seasons. It's all producers. Anytime a self-elimination happens, the producers tell the lead, here's what you say next. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. Are all these other guys going to leave me? You have to, That insecurity becomes a part of the narrative when you get a self-elimination. I don't believe Jen actually feels that way or cares, honestly. I, I think she's happy that this guy left. Uh, Austin also could have, you know, done a goodbye with the guys too. something yeah. interesting in there. Absolutely. I'll wait for you on the outside. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I, he, <laughs> and I was like, oh, my gosh, who is going to be the top four? Um, we then see... Uh, Jen is producing tears. She's not feeling good enough or worthy enough. Um, she's, and then she tells the guys, I, I see a future at the end of this, but I also see a future where I end up alone and nobody chooses me. And that, and I'm like, that nobody what? chooses me part. They've, yeah. they've had in promos this whole season, that shot of her going, I also see a future where I end up alone. They cut off that because nobody chooses me part. So they make it seem like in the promos, she's not going to choose anybody. But now oh, we see the full clip. they make it clip. seem like she's going to Womack. Yes. And now we're seeing the full clip oh. is this. It's just a dumb producer line. Not it's only, false stakes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, kudos to them in the promos. But now that we've seen this full clip, that it's like in you quotes based on Womack. the fear. What's that? You don't think she's going to Womack? No, I That's don't. what no. they seem like they're leading up to. Yeah, I don't think so. Because they keep saying, like, I can't let you propose to me. And are you sure you want to do this? I think what they're aiming at now is she's going to tell the winner that they won before the rose ceremony or something. I, I, I think mm. it just doesn't seem like she's going to... Um, well, clearly somebody's choosing her. Someone is getting down on a knee <laughs> that she is stopping. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. So exactly. it's immediate false stakes. I think it's Devin. Um, by the way, I think the white shoulder is Devin. The ring winner. No, the white shoulder is the the guy that she says I can't let you propose to me unless it's oh, going to be this. Second. Unless it's I can't let you propose to me. I'm going to propose to you. I'm proposing you. to you. That's what I thought it was. Okay. Maybe it is. I don't know. But I think that white shoulder is Devin. Oh, my God. I don't know what gives okay, me that so feeling. so Devin. But I have. Marcus. It. Who else? Spencer? Maybe Spencer. Grant? Can't, look, we'll talk about this Grant oh, date. Grant. He yeah, came out Grant of nowhere. Definitely. And I was like, oh, shit. This guy, is, he's got some juice. Uh, portion seven begins. The guys are all talking about Austin leaving. Dylan is explaining they were roommates. He's been having doubts. I was there. I was in a room with him. He was saying these things. I corroborate. Jen ITMs that she feels she failed. Maybe she's not uh, the right woman for these men. She's scared to tell the other guys this has ruined her relationships for the past. And she comes into the guys and she tells them it's important for them to know how she's feeling. And she explains the whole thing of Austin leaving. And she doesn't... Uh, she doesn't feel how amazing she is, even though they're all saying it. And she believes that she does see her future in that room, but she also sees the future alone. And Spencer weighs in. He's like, uh, it's a hard time being vulnerable, but it's brave to be able to open up. He couldn't do what she's done. Sam M then weighs in. They're all kind of trying to make her feel better. And he's mm -hmm. like, we see our wife as well. Yeah, <laughs> we all room. see you as our wife. <laughs> what a, a just bizarre situation circumstance event to ever be in that you have to then say me and these other 10 guys we all see you as our wife <laughs> what it's Sister just wives. bizarre but uh sam uses this opportunity to get the first one-on-one -on -one time he pulls her and he assures her that he doesn't see her differently at all and he asks her if he let his guard down would she still be able to love him she says and she's like yeah then my answer is the same <laughs> I thought that was a good uh, bit of NLP mm -hmm. to work in the word love into this theoretical scenario near future, you know, where it's like, would you still be able to love me? Because now the idea is in her head, like, could I love him? Yeah. I thought it was good. good and it's also like, you're asking me a question. I'm going to reverse the question back to you. Yeah. You know, you you do the tough answers. Um. We then see one-on-one -on -one time with Marcus. He's reassuring her. Devin. Marcus literally um, says he wants to be a mirror to her. Literally says that. Oh, yeah. I can be a mirror and show you how incredible you are. All these guys are doing mirror plays. One-on-one -on -one time with Devin. Uh, he says, you know, I don't know what you went through to make you feel unworthy, but, like, I will show you that you're chosen. And he says that he ITMs that he he sees her smile and watch the light go back into somebody's eyes. This was kind of a dark, uh, yeah, dark description. He also does a, a small error here. <clears throat> he goes, Ooh. It, he goes. Uh, I don't know what you've been through to make you feel unworthy, but you are worthy. And if it's not me who shows you that, somebody else in that room will. He floats. Oh, I thought that was for TRR. But it's, it's already floating the idea that I'm not going to win and you don't have to pick me. He's planting that in her mind. And I think it means in his mind he has already not won. Now, I don't know what happens in the end. And I am, I am predicting that that white sleeve is Devin. I don't know, though. But I just thought that this was a weird misstep. You, In my opinion, in this game, you never say anything to that end. You never mm. even give a hint of an idea that it could be anyone else but you. And here he's just saying it I out loud. I think it's kind of for TRR, like, yeah. in the same way, it's like, we're all your husband. Kind of <laughs> <thing>. <laughs> um, uh, they, they kiss, um, and we get the next portion. Well, the she one doesn't, on one date with Grant. Oh. She doesn't give out a group date, Rose. Oh, right. She comes back no to the group guys. group date, Rose, because of the seriousness of the night. Yeah, and so that's a zero-point rose blown there. Nobody can get their hands on it. It will just wither away into the darkness, which is always sad. I, I hate to see the, the specialty roses go ungiven. Mm. Sorry, Clues. Sorry yeah. you had to see that. Me too. <laughs> now, and next, next portion, we get uh, the day portion of Grant's one-on-one date. Uh, 
Is this a hoodoo? Do you count this as a hoodoo? I wrote down, he runs to meet her on a dirt path. He picks her up, but no hoodoo. This is a Pruju or a virgin hoodoo or a Christian hoodoo. Of course, in honor of Madison Pruitt, uh, giving this kind of dead-legged hoodoo to pilot Peter the Weber. Pruju. Um, oh, my God. I don't count it because it's also like... No, I don't count it either. A formal hoodoo requires the hoodooer to run to the anchor. She's not doing that. She's not running to any of these guys. It's always them running to her. And I'm fine with that. But she needs to give at least a little, you know, two-step kind of leap onto them for it to be a real hooju. This is him just picking mm -hmm. her up. It's more of a forklift than anything. Forklift, yeah. Um, after the forklift, they see two horses. Normally, clues is creatures. God, I, but I'm sorry. That sheep just... The yeah. sheep. No, none of the horses was leaping. They weren't Straight even looking the into the camera. They weren't even looking into the camera. It's like they didn't even know they were being filmed. Exactly. Disappointing. Um, I love Jen's horse girl outfit. It is mm. hot. I love it. I love and this so whole. so does uh, Grant. This whole little uh, day portion. The way they shot these horses was absolutely stunning. At one point, Jen even says, like, it's like we're in a movie. And I'm like, yeah, it looks like. A movie it's incredibly mm -hmm. well done uh the the reflection coming off the wet sand in some cases the beautiful backdrop they're shooting it with this this nice long lens from far away and it kind of like compresses the the distance it's just beautifully shot and it really makes you wonder like if they can do this why aren't they doing it all the time there are so many shots this season that look bad that just look like the rain shot uh, is a good example. Yeah, it looks this is terrible. A -com. This is so well done. This literally does look like a movie. I was blown away by how beautifully they shot this this uh, horse portion of the day. Um, we see uh, they have this picnic on the beach, and then it starts raining for real. And yeah. this is <laughs> this is actually cute and romantic. They get. A umbrella from an off-screen person and they huddle together under the umbrella for this picnic i and really was like half expecting <laughs> to see just a, a giant stream of rain <laughs> just hitting them right there and she's like jesus guys what are you doing to me you're making me jump out of planes i get a helicopter to everything is i keep redoing my yeah. hair <laughs> <laughs> Dog. <laughs> it's like everywhere she goes it's raining even when she's just walking pondering on the streets there's just like a rain thing <laughs> following her going down the street jesse palmer every time he meets her just throws a bucket of water in her face um <laughs> we get a casting card after a couple of kisses here are you ready to get back in the saddle then we get the night portion of the state portion number nine they walk into this old villa a backyard i don't know know exactly what this location is but it is pretty pretty nice it's pretty well lit could have been a little better but it, I'll, I'll give it to them uh and then grant <laughs> says he it was perfectly imperfect their day together and he says he wants to get to know mm. her better but he also wants her to know what makes him who he is and he explains that his father has makes been him a, tick oh yeah that's right what makes him tick mm. I think these guys talk to each other a lot when they're just like broing out and the, the language think like becomes phrases like that yeah, they start saying it's yeah. a common language pool. Um, he explains that his father has been an addict for 30 years and he explains his dad was everything, his superhero, but he was always intoxicated. He didn't even know when he was a kid. The one person he trusted most was always lying to him. And before he came here, his dad got fired and he was blaming everybody else for it. But then he called Grant the next day and checked into rehab. And his dad told him that this is the first time that Grant could know the real him because he's sober, under two months sober, but he's he's still trying. And Jen says she's worked in the ER. She's seen addiction uh, up close and personal. It's a sickness, and it speaks volumes to who Grant is as a person to bear the weight of that growing up. And Grant's uh, father addiction PTC was my play, 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 play of the game. This PTC was also my play, 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 play of the game. I feel like I kind of forgot about Grant a little bit in the player pool. Me too. And he crushed this. Same. And I think he might be in the final four. I don't know. Um, but this was 
just a perfectly perfectly played date we get more ptcs here this is a it becomes very heavy yeah um we talk about uh jen's dad taking off and they talk about like both not really having a father figure and she searched for love in the wrong places because of this and got in this toxic emotionally abusive relationship and um she didn't know how to stand up for herself in the relationship she wants to have a voice they talk about like there's some hint of racism and equality and like her partner was being racist or something and was like saying racism doesn't exist or something i felt like we were just skirting on the edge of kind of a deeper talk about this um yeah i'm very curious what they cut out same i thought Um, the exact same thing but yeah jen is for however much you say Jen is acting this season, she is able to handle these PTCs with a plum. And I think part of that is that she has all of these powerful PTCs to like yeah. mirror back. No, I agree. Um, she, I think she's a great bachelorette. Don't mistake any of that. And I think they're asking her to do a lot, like more than most bachelorettes have had to yeah. do in terms of the acting. And now a skeleton's coming back. That said, I, I will always maintain that she kind of gave the okay for the skeleton. I don't think they would have just like dropped that on her without her knowledge. But mm-hmm. um, it is in these moments when she's playing these PTCs and uh, kind of like mirroring some of the guys PTCs a little bit that I think her true power as a bachelorette comes through. She is able to just mm-hmm. like carry the weight of, of all of these kind of insane things that have happened to her in her life and, and pull and them off. And like the time in, in the way. ER too. It's like you can relate yeah. that to so many different things. Um, he gets that zero pointer, that one on one rose, and a kiss, and he says it's on the top of the world. Smile, it kind of a self glow here by Grant, um, and he's playing a super four TRR. Yeah. Uh, and at the very end here, he loads in an ITM a love level two. He sees himself starting to fall. Portion ten begins. The guys come in for that rose ceremony, um, or for the cocktail party, I should say. Eight guys, six of them are roseless. Grant tells the other guys here that he thinks he's falling in love with Jen. That's a loaded love level three, so he ups that very quickly. And this load, this public loading of the love level three was out of nowhere for yeah, me. I, I did know. not see Grant doing this. It, that's why I think, like to me, he was this kind of like you're saying. He got lost in the shuffle a little bit. And then you see him do that PTC, and you're like, "Oh shit, this guy can play." Then he does this, and you're like, "Oh shit, this guy can really play." He just basically oh. squashed all of those guys in that moment. Like, look, here's yes. where I'm at, dudes. Boom. And then he'll later follow it up with 4TRR tears about it. Yeah. About realizing these feelings. So it comes off like, it doesn't come off how Sam N's uh, public love level three went. It comes <laughs> off the opposite. It comes off yeah. as a very 4TRR and probably getting in people's heads. Oh, absolutely um, it is. Which is part of you why see I it love this play. Literally, Dylan... Uh, then ITMs that it's all coming back down to time because he's just seen Grant say I'm falling in love with her to the rest of him and he's like well shit I haven't even had uh, a real one on one I just had this mini one on one and it's been a minute Devin says it's tough hearing that because everybody's feeling a certain way temp wave about Jen he's a front runner and he's even getting flustered about uh, Mm -hmm. Grant's love level 3 Jeremy's ITMing that Grant made the mood (laughs) even more tense and emotional he hasn't even had a one on one and he plans to make the most of his time with her so he's they're all leading into like this cocktail party super important i gotta get my time jen comes in and she explains it's been an intense week for everybody and she knows exactly what she's looking for so no cocktail clarity straight to rose <sighs> brutal great face plays yeah. devin's like i need a drink he's always saying that <laughs> whenever anything happens he's like <laughs> he know. turns to the model every time it's like didn't yeah. you hear grant's ptc dude all the guys now are nervous oh. dylan had a conversation <laughs> Uh, he was planning to have, but now he's not going to get to. And Spencer says, you take the cocktail parties as a guarantee. So it really sucks. And I just wrote in all if caps. You're an idiot. Yeah. Has he ever seen the show? Cocktail parties get canceled every season. Sometimes by the producers. Sometimes Sometimes times. by the lead. Sometimes by other players. DLP. Uh, yeah. <laughs> DLP will do it sometimes. I liked that she came in and canceled. Usually it's DLP, but I liked that she yeah. was just like, no, I know what I'm doing. Straight yeah. to Rose. 
They're sending her Let in to her swing the axe instead of bringing in the Dark yeah. Lord. But we get... And uh, then, oh my God, this Jonathan and Grant conversation yeah. outside where Grant produces four TRR tiers. This was almost my play of the game. It was like competing with the PTC. For I me. agree with you. But I think, to me, the PTC was like slightly more important because it sets this one up. But this... It was unreal. He then even says to Jonathan, don't tell the other guys I was crying. It makes it a hundred times more for TRR. It's unbelievable. He, yes. he really shone. Make it secret shined. tears just for the fourth audience and Jonathan. What's the past tense of shine? Shown. Shown? Shined. Shined. He shined on him. He shone on this. He shone? Whatever it was, he did know. it. Yeah, this is my, like almost tied yeah play the I game agree. because i mean this is such a strong play to the fourth yeah. audience i expect to see his numbers grow so much this week i absolutely agree uh we then see this rose ceremony we get sam m getting that first flower followed by devin marcus jeremy final rose tonight no dark touch for those keeping score at home and the final rose is spencer so we oh, say goodbye to God, Dylan. I already blocked out in my mind that Dylan went home. I know. It's it's brutal. <laughs> the youngest player in the game. I put in my top part in this episode. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> he was the youngest player in the game this season. He's going to do great on Paradise, I think, next year. Uh, we get that Tam Sig. Take a moment. Say your goodbyes. And he wishes her Damn. luck. Says he's rooting for her. Then he goes, I love you, bros. A final love level four to all the guys I met tonight. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, goodbye. He gets in the car and he has this exit speech. This sucks. You meet someone who you feel like is your person, is, is the right person for you. Uh, for them to not feel that way tears. is disappointing. Yeah, produces tears. Ah, oh, gorgeous. I think there was I more to be I think he's got to age but... up a little bit, but yeah. I, I love Dylan as a player. I do too. I think he'll do good. And then uh, those that remain cheers, and we see still to come on this season. Jen catches a fish with her bare hands, some kissing. Jen feels lucky. Helicopters, waterfalls, rooftop dinners, concert halls. Who juice? Love level. <laughs> Fireworks, more kisses. Devin, love level four. Jen's excited, uh, but has never introduced anyone to her family. Familial resistance. Grant is confused. Jonathan has fear. Marcus isn't far enough along with his love. Jen is sick and tired. Her cup isn't being filled. Devin is producing tears. Jen doesn't know. De Jen doesn't want to feel this way. Then we get the scene that we've seen tease the whole season you sure you want to do this jen is tired of letting men dictate her relationships and she tells somebody that white shouldered suit or white suited shoulder she can't let him propose to her and that devin is the would end wear a white suit. of our program. i can't believe devin is getting so far he's getting a love level four this i know is... i know i'm grateful this season has like to me big highs and big lows it's like when mm -hmm. it's boring, it's like watching paint dry. When it's good, yeah. it's some of the best Bachelorette shit I've ever seen in the history of this game. Yeah. Um, yep. All right. I now. agree. Who was your MVP? I'm curious case? what's going to happen. For his PTC, for his fourth tier RR, second and fourth audience tiers, Grant was my M M M M V P. -P, 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 -P I thought Jonathan did a pretty good one-on-one -on -one date, too, but... Yeah. I Not like this. It was okay. Jonathan's one-on-one -on -one was, like, whatever, passable. He just did what he, what he needed to do to get the rose. But because Grant went above and beyond a PTC that blew everything out of the water, those four TRR tears to Jonathan having a impromptu guy chat in the darkness of the Auckland night, for those reasons, Grant was also my M M M M M V P. I just thought he, he kind of came out of nowhere and um, put himself on the map in a big way. That group love level three to put those guys on notice. Like, this is where I'm at, dudes. I just thought that he, he really crushed the entire it's game. It's hard to play that off and not get everyone mad at you. And he did it. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. Um, now. Wow, we're sharing one brain cell this episode in our awards. I know. I like think our face plays the face were, the, play. were the only difference. Yeah. Now, <laughs> let's look at our remaining players and their rose quotients. I said I was going to do this somewhere in the middle of the show. I'm doing it now. Ooh. So to calculate a rose quotient, here's how you do it. Every rose is assigned a point value. If you have a rose that is given to you outside of a rose ceremony, this is first impression rose, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, 
rows, group date rows, knock knock rows, my even special rows, two on one rows, any kind of specialty roses that again are not given in a rose ceremony. Those roses are worth zero points. If you're in a rose ceremony, your rose is worth the amount of points that is the order it was given. So like Sam M, for example, got the first rose in the rose ceremony, that's worth one point. You then add all those values and divide by the total number of roses, which at this point is five for all of these players. It gives you a number. That number is your rose quotient, and you're trying to get the closest to zero that you can. A zero is a perfect rose quotient. That has never mm -hmm. been scored in the history of our game. So let's take a look Who's at close, where, though? what's that? Who is close though, of the greats? I, I believe Caitlin Bristow still has Caitlin the best Bristow. rose quotient of all time. Which was exactly. a, was it, what was it? A one point something or a point zero point? Seven, point, one point six yeah, seven, I think it was somewhere in there. It's in our book, uh, if you care to look. But um, right now we have Jonathan, Devin, Jeremy, Spencer, Sam M, Grant and Marcus are left in our beloved game. And these are their rose quotients. Jonathan has the worst one at a five. Devin has hmm. a four. Jeremy has a 3.6. Spencer and Sam M both have three. Grant has two. And Marcus is oh. sitting at the top of the heap with a 1.8. So that's Dang. where we stand. So what is it? M top four, Marcus, Grant, Sam M Devin. and Spencer. No, Devin's a four. He's got no, the I'm worst. No, I'm just guessing... Sorry, oh, I, I was guessing yeah. for the top four players. Right, right. I can't believe Jeremy lasted longer than half of my top four. I really can't either. Top four. He's a floater if ever there was one. And he's yeah. just, he's surviving because you see people like Austin self-eliminating. Had Austin not self-eliminated, I think Jeremy gets think sent home tonight and Austin's in the game. Jeremy. Yeah, I do. Because mm. I think Austin had a one-on-one -on -one date coming next week. And he just, like, the really? pressure of the game got to him. I think so, yeah. I don't know. It's like I you're constantly measuring yourself up against everyone and you see you see the love levels and you see the numbers of dates and I, I understand why he caved, but, but that's the game. You're Part not if you're not game. going to the Air Force or to help your daughter <laughs> who just gave birth, don't go. <laughs> right. What are you going back to, Austin? T V yeah. and a couple of beers? Um I I just think that too many I think he guys. thought he was going home that week and was like... Yeah. And, but I'll, I'll say this on my too. Terms. There's something about self-elimination. I don't know if this stat is accurate or not, but I think it is. I, I don't have the actual numbers to back it up, but my feelings are telling me guys have more self-eliminations than the women do because I think the guys get mm. like... A lot of this Pride. is wrapped up in like ego and like, yeah. oh, these other guys, will fuck this. I'm just going to take my ball and go home. Whereas the women understand more this is a game and I need to stay in it as long as I can to get my numbers up, maybe yes. get on paradise, et cetera, et cetera. I don't think you see as many self eliminations, um, in bachelor. At least stay on. And like, even if you know your first audience game sucks, develop yeah. a friendship with someone like exactly. get, get in a dynamic duo, start doing some antics. Like exactly what it, uh, yeah. You're on the number one other than the Olympics. You're on the number one network TV show on Monday nights. You need to stay on that as long as you possibly can because you may never get the chance again. In my humble. Time will tell. I Time think he'll tell. probably, I think he probably did well enough for Paradise, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't either. Um, but that's it. That wraps up our recap of Gen Trans episode five. We hope you've enjoyed it. We will be back um, next, what, Friday with This Week in Bachelor well, Nation. Yes. And our live show at. 4.30 Pacific time on the Patreon. Yeah. And if you're just oh, wait, listening that to will this, have already happened. That will have already happened, but we do it every Monday nonetheless, 4.30 p.m. Yeah. PST, 30 minutes before our beloved game starts to air East Coast. And if you're just listening to this on a podcast, maybe you don't know, but we're on YouTube. You can see us now uh, with a bunch of graphics and we Ooh. cut in historical clips. So like today we were talking about uh, the Nick Vial farm shit shoveling date with Kern Olympios. You can see a clip of that in this that very show. episode if you go watch it on YouTube. So check us out there. And we thank you for joining us. Praise be Dark Lord Palmer. Please rate this podcast. 
Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us. And then please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us. And then please rate this podcast. Please review this podcast. Please get a friend to listen to us and then 